Hello and uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tabinda Riaz, and today I'm going to present in front of you my research study regarding electrospun bilayer membrane of PCL nanofibers with ibuprofen and hyaluronic acid deposited on gelatin and hyaluronic acid film for wound dressing applications. I'm sure we are all familiar with this basic household staple called SOS bobos or sometimes we call it first aid bandages. But the question is, are they good enough for critical and painful wounds? Well, there is always, improve, uh, well, there is always room for improvement and the struggle for achieving better to best never stops. And this research study is also a humble step towards this goal. Here you can see few biomedical applications of these electrospun nanofibers. The main applications include development of scaffolds for tissue engineering, devising drug delivery systems, manufacturing electrospun nanofibers based wound dressings, also preparing biosensors and medical implants are also prepared from these electrospun nanofibers. In the current scenario, we are going to talk about a bilayer wound dressing equipped with a drug delivery system. These electrospun wound dressings are capable of protecting wound from the outer environment. They should be breathable and absorbent. They must treat pain and inflammation and also they facilitate cell attachment. For this purpose, these bilayer, these wound dressings are basically of two kinds, depending upon their structure. Number one, single layer structure, and number two, multi-layer hybrid structure. And the fabrication techniques used to prepare these nanofibers wound dressings include single needle electrospinning, needleless electrospinning, emulsion electrospinning, and coaxial electrospinning. And in this study, we have used needleless electrospinning to prepare a bilayer hybrid structure of a wound dressing. And the reason why we prepared a bilayer structure is that it, uh, it offers diverse functionalities. It has targeted properties and it will perform more efficiently as compared to the other commercially available bandages or uh, wound dressings in the market. The reason why I chose electrospinning technique in order to prepare these, this wound dressing is because this technique is robust and economical. It offers you the tunability of diameters and these nanofibers also resembles the extracellular matrix of our skin. Due to very fine diameters and large surface area to volume ratio, these nanofibers has a higher skin contact, which allows them to deliver the drug more appropriately to the affected area. Moreover, these nanofibers can also be, in, uh, can also be uh, loaded with different drugs and pharmaceutical agents, and drugs can be encapsulated into their structure. For this research study, the basic backbone polymer that was used to prepare these nanofibers was polyepicillium caprolactone, usually known as PCL. PCL is a linear aliphatic polyester and it is hydrophobic in nature. In order to overcome the hydrophobicity problem or limitation of this polymer, a hydrophilic uh, polymer, polyethylene glycol with a very low molar mass of like 400 grams per mole was blended with polyepicillium uh, uh, caprolactone in order to balance and tailor the wettability properties. Both these polymers are not only biocompatible and biodegradable, but also they are FDA approved. That means that they are safe to be used for their biomedical applications. A model drug, ibuprofen, which is a non-steroidal and anti-inflammatory drug and has very low molar, and has low molar mass, uh, was incorporated into these nanofibers in order to achieve the, uh, uh, the pain relieving properties. This drug is also hydrophobic in nature. The validity of this study lies in the use of this low molar mass of PEG. As from the literature review, it, it has been found that nobody has ever used this low molar mass of PEG in order to blend PCL. So let's discover the properties. 
But before discovering the properties, let's see how this PCL solution was prepared in order to do their electric spinning. 10 weight percent PCL was dissolved in a mixture of chloroform and ethanol in a specific weight by weight ratio. This mixture was left overnight for magnetic stirring. And then next morning after achieving a homogeneous solution, Further stepwise addition of other ingredients such as polyethylene glycol and ibuprofen was done with subsequent magnetic stirring for 15 minutes. Once the solution uh, is homogeneous, the solution was put in an ultrasonic bath for more, 10 more minutes in order to remove the air bubbles. This polymer solution was then subjected to electrospinning, needleless electrospinning. And this needleless electrospinning has a semi-industrial equipment, which is manufactured by Almaco company, and it is usually called NanoSpider. This NanoSpider machine has two wire electrodes. As you can see in the animation, that a solution carrier moves across the length of the wire, depositing a layer of polymer onto that wire. Under the influence of high electricity, hundreds and thousands of multiple polymer jets naturally initiate from this wire and are stretched and dragged towards the upper side where there is a substrate installed above and they are deposited in the form of nanofibers. Before going into the details of the characteristics of this uh, barrier wound dressing, let's talk about the functioning of an ideal wound dressing. Our human skin is composed of three distinct layers, epidermis, dermis and hypodermis. Here we are going to deal with upper two layers of the skin, which is epidermis and dermis. A wound which is present in these two layers, it must, has, it must be covered with an effective wound dressing. And what is an effective wound dressing? An effective wound dressing must have the ability to absorb the wound exudate from the wound bed. It should have a drug delivery system that can deliver the drug over the period of time to the affected area to relieve pain and to cure inflammation. It also must protect the wound from, uh, against bacterial invasion and it should be permeable for oxygen. Usually there are three basic steps or stages of wound healing. If we see in the, in the diagram, we see that there is a wound bed which is uncovered and an uncovered wound has more risk of bacterial invasion. Whereas if we see another uh, wound bed, which is covered with a, uh, with a wound dressing, we can see that there is a less risk of bacterial invasion into that wound bed, which means it will have less chances of inflammation and infections. And it will have much more time to complete the fibroblast formation, which is the first key step towards wound healing process. Hence, it is proved that an uncovered wound has higher risk of bacterial invasion and inflammation as compared to a wound uh, covered with an effective wound dressing. Now, hydrogels in wound dressings. Why we use hydrogels in wound dressings? Just because hydrogel has high absorben uh, absorbency. They are very absorbent and they offer a good moisture management system, which facilitates rapid healing of the wound. Let's have a look how hydrogels work in a wound dressing. They offer twofold benefits. Hydrogel wound dressings keep the dry wound optimally moist by donating it moisture. On the other hand, it also absorbs wound exudate from the wound bed, which helps in rapid healing of the wound. In order to prepare this hydrogel layer, two different substances were selected to uh, create this hydrogel film, gelatin and sodium hyaluronate. Both these polymers are not only biocompatible, biodegradable and hydrophilic, but they're also well known for their tissue regeneration properties. And also sodium hyaluronate mimics the extracellular matrix of our skin as it is the basic ingredient of our skin. It also facilitates the cell adhesion. As we can see the chemical structure of sodium hyaluronate, it has different active sites at its ends, which can, in, uh, which can interact with the water molecules in order to maintain that moisture system, moisture management system. The fabrication of bilayer wound dressing involved a two-step process. At the first step, a hydrogel layer of gelatin and hyaluronic acid was coated on a Teflon sheet with the help of a manual bar coater. 
then immediately PCL and PCL PEG nanofibers loaded with ibuprofen and hyaluronic acid were deposited on the wet, wet, gel, uh, wet hydrogel film for better adhesion via nanospider electrospinning. That's how this bilayer structure was prepared. And as you can see in the diagram, uh, due to the uh, immediate uh, electrospinning of nanofibers over the wet uh, gelatin and hyaluronic acid coating, we, has a, we had a better adhesion of these two layers and they were in, inseparable. The morphological characterization of these nanofibers was performed by scanning electron microscopy. And from the SCM images of these nanofibers, we came to know that all these nanofibers were round and beaded necklace, necklace shaped. They have heterogeneous, they had heterogeneous morphology with diameters ranging from 400 to 700 nanometers. There were also uh, nanonets present into their structure, which had fine nanofibers with approximately, uh, di with diameters approximately ranging to 100 nanometers. In, these, uh, in one of these pictures, we can also see the fusion of these nanofibers with the hydrogel film of, uh, um, with the hydrogel film. As we can see that these nanofibers are well fused and attached uh, with the hydrogel film that later proved that they were inseparable. The calculations of mean diameters of these nanofibers um, gave us the results that all these nanofibers are fine in diameter and are all in under one micron. But the CV percent of these nanofibers was higher, which proves their heterogeneous nature. The crystallinity of these PCL nanofibers containing hyaluronic acid, polyethylene glycol, and epiprofen was determined by their DSC analysis performed under nitrogen. Small peaks of polyethylene glycol can be seen before melting of PCL, but there, are, there were no distinct peaks of hyaluronic acid or ibuprofen melting found in any case of these samples. The crystallinity ratio of these nanofibers was also calculated as compared to the pure 100% crystalline PCL. And we can see that after the incorporation of hyaluronic acid and ibuprofen, there was no, uh, we can see that there is no significant impact of hyaluronic acid on the crystallinity ratio of these nano PCL nanofibers. Whereas on the other hand, 7% ibuprofen, uh, whereas in the case of 7% ibuprofen, uh, we see a decrease in the crystallinity ratio of these nanofibers, which is quite in agreement with their literature view, where we can see that ibuprofen act as a defect into their structure and it limit their recrystallization uh, process and it also lowers the crystallinity ratio of these nanofibers. Thermal analysis of these nanofibers was performed by TGA and also the quantification of ibuprofen in these nanofibers was done. Here we can see a two-stage degradation process which starts with an initial degradation around 280 degrees centigrade that corresponded to the hyaluronic acid degradation. Later, a full-scale degradation of PCL nanofibers around 400 degrees centigrade occurred. There were distinct peaks of ibuprofen degradation at 234 degrees centigrade, which proves that the, the, that the drug was successfully incorporated into their structure. From their initial weight loss, the quantification of ibuprofen was done, and it was observed that the quantified amount of ibuprofen determined by their initial weight loss was in good agreement to their theoretical amount, to its theoretical amount that was initially incorporated into these nanofibers. In order to measure the wettability of gelatin hyaluronic acid hydrogel film, these nanofibers and bilayer wound dressing structures uh, were subjected to the water contact angle measurements. And why it is important to determine the hydrophilicity of this bilayer structure was just because it, it, it must have a certain uh, um, tendency to absorb the wound exudate in order to maintain a moist environment around the wound. And after the, uh, this analysis, it was found that all the nanofibers with P uh, all the nanofibers of PCL, including the nanofibers containing hyal hyaluronic acid and the bilayer structure, uh, they, they showed 
a hydrophobic nature and uh, by, by uh, showing a larger water content angles. Whereas if we see gelatin and hyaluronic acid film, it shows a smaller angle, which means it acted as a hydrophilic surface. This is the reason that we created a hydrogel film at the base of the wound uh, uh, of this wound dressing, as PCL nanofibers are hydrophobic in nature and they have less uh, tendency to absorb the water. Whereas this uh, hydrogel film will act as a hydrophilic surface and will absorb the excessive wound exudate from the wound bed. The drug release kinetics of these ibuprofen hyaluronic acid loaded nanofibers was studied by UVV spectroscopy. And the, and the drug release uh, graph showed that it has a two-stage two release phenomena. With an initial burst release during the first five hours of the analysis, it, was followed, a, it followed a steady release until 24 hours. But even after 24 hours, the, the, the release of ibuprofen did not stop and it continued until 48 hours. It means that a steady release is continued until 48 hours. And from the release percentage release efficiencies of these nanofibers, we can see that there is not much difference between 24 hours and 84, uh, 48 hours um, of the nanofibers that uh, advocates the reason that in, in, in future studies, we must study these nanofibers drug release for a longer period of time because they have a tendency to release drug for a longer period of time, for a sustained period uh, of time. That, that could be the reason that the drug was encapsulated into the structure of these nanofibers and it was not very easy to release into the uh, aqueous media. Then the antibacterial analysis of this bilayer wound dressing was performed. You know, it is important for a wound dressing to have a certain antibacterial resistance. But a question here arises that is ibuprofen really antibacterial? Well, ibuprofen is mainly anti-inflammatory, but in literature view, it was found that it, in sometimes it can limit the effect of few bacteria like E. coli or Staphylococcus aureus. In order to prove this fact, five different samples of these nanofibers and bilayer structures were tested against two bacterial strains. Number one, E. coli bacterial strain, which is a gram-negative bacteria, and Staphylococcus epidermidis, which is a gram-positive bacteria. On the other hand, as a control sample, chloramphenicol discs were used, as chloramphenicol is a very good antibacterial agent. All the experiments were performed in triplicate manner in order to, reproduce, in order to ensure the reproducibility of these results. After the incubation time, it was seen that three out of these five samples showed mild inhibition against E. coli bacterial strain, whereas no inhibition was observed against Staphylococcus epidermidis bacterial strain in any sample, which proves that ibuprofen can mildly act as, a, um, as an antibacterial agent only against E. coli bacteria, but it does not have the tendency to, uh, limit the uh, to limit the effect of other bacteria, which uh, emphasizes on the need uh, uh, for future studies that we must incorporate some other active antibacterial agents to this wound dressing in order to improve its antibacterial resistance. Therefore, if I conclude my work here, I can say that successfully of the fabrication of an electrospun bilayer wound dressing was done with, that was loaded with ibuprofen and hyaluronic acid. The physiochemical characterization of ibuprofen and hyaluronic acid the loaded nanofibers and this bilayer wound dressing uh, determined that all the nanofibers has heterogeneous nature and their diameters are in a range of 400 to 700 nanometers. These nanofibers uh, were, and the bilayer structures were also subjected to biological testing that included drug release and antibacterial uh, analysis, which uh, proved that these nanofibers has a controlled drug release over a period of 48 hours, but it also, but it does not has very good antibacterial properties. It mildly inhibit only E. coli bacteria. Here we can see the actual um, the sample of the bilayer wound dressing, and we can see that both the layers are completely attached to each other, and they are not um, and they are not uh, separable. 
For the future projections, the cytotoxicity analysis of these samples will be performed. The drug release kinetics of these nanofibers will be studied for a longer period of time. And also a natural antibacterial agent such as curcumin could be added to these nanofibers to have better antibacterial properties. And last, the in vitro cell proliferation assay will also be performed for these nanofibrous wound dressings. Here, I would like to end my presentation by thanking all of you for your attention. Thank you.